Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create and use a stopwatch. So I'm going to create a new macro. I'm going to call it stopwatch. Put it in the tutorials category. So to create one, you just use macro. Uh, I'm just going to start it and uh, just put in a name. So I'll just use stopwatch as my name. And then I'm going to put in a pause. Well, instead of a normal pause, let's make it random so we can see some changes. So humanly pause, let's say from one second to three seconds. And then um, let's say you want to see what the, the value is. So if you want to use window.display message box, Here's something very important um, about variables and the stopwatch. As you can see, the, st the stopwatch is named stopwatch, and I'm going to have the window display what the value of the stopwatch is. But this isn't going to work, and I'll explain why after a second. You're just going to get an error. As soon as it pauses for that random time, it's going to say there was an error. And that's because the actual error is the variable stopwatch does not exist. It doesn't mean you don't have a stopwatch, it just means there's no variable. Because this, if you look at the tooltips, is the name of a stopwatch. It's not a variable, it's a name. So you can't just call it like this. So if you want to see what it is, you're going to have to read the uh, stopwatch. So use read stopwatch, then put in the name. And then you can save the value as a variable. So I'll just say x. Then I'll change this to x. And now if we start it, it's going to between a second and three seconds, and it's going to show us the value. Now if we keep doing this, let me put it on the infinite and show you something else about stopwatches. You can see it's 1.3 seconds. Now it's at 7. Now it's at 10, it's going to keep going up. Even though our pause is between one second and three seconds, the stopwatch has a value of over 10 seconds. And now it's going to be a lot higher. So, why is that? It's because we started it, but we never reset it. So, we'd have to reset it. And we can just do that with macro um, reset stopwatch and type in the name again and so now if we do it our value should all be under three seconds and you can see it's working now okay so how would you use it because most of the time you're not just going to read it and put you know what what is the time so i'm going to get rid of some of this and then show you how to use it so i'm going to make an if statement if um let's say the stopwatch macro dot stopwatch is let's do less than say less than one and a half seconds right in the middle and then I'll just display something window dot display uh, it was less than one and a half seconds and then if yeah macro stopwatch Oops, is greater than um, one and a half seconds then window dot display is more than one and a half seconds and then 
Yes. All right, so we're gonna have a problem here too because like I showed you before, we haven't reset it. So we're actually gonna have two problems, but macro.reset stopwatch. Okay, so I said you may have two problems. One is if uh, you had greater than first, then it would reset the stopwatch, then go down to this one, it's always gonna be less than. So you gotta make sure less than is above greater than here, or you'll just get a double one. It'll say greater and then almost automatically, it'll say less than after that. And you don't want that to happen. So. Let's see what we have now. It was more than one and a half seconds. Less. More. So it's working properly right now. That's what we want. So we got it started. If it's less than one and a half seconds, we saw that it displays this one. If it's greater, it displays this one. And we have resets in there. So that's pretty much how you use them. Um, but let's say in the real world with your macros, you're not going to use both less than and greater than in one macro. Um, you hardly ever are actually going to use less than. Most of the time it's going to be just greater than. Because most of the time, let's say in games, you have a buff. And the buff lasts two minutes. So you really only care about when it goes past that two minute mark. And so, or you get close to it. So all you'd have to do is change this to two minutes and then change this window display box to whatever you want it to do. So if it's a buff, you're probably gonna press a key. So you use keyboard dot press key and then whatever um, number or key your buff is. And uh, that's pretty much how you use it. So if you're using it for like a buff, you're probably not gonna have this in there. This is pretty much all you need. You have your macro that starts the stopwatch. Do whatever it is you're gonna do, attack something, then heal you up afterwards, loot, and then check the stopwatch and see if two minutes or whatever time you need the buff for. And then, like if your buff is run out, then, you know, keyboard press key, whatever the key is for your buff. So that's how you use it, like in a game. And this is pretty much all you need as far as the coding for the stopwatch. Starting it, checking to see if it's past a certain time period, then doing something and resetting the stopwatch. And then just looping this, you know, using infinite here for as long as you need. Alright, I hope that helps.